Hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you joined us tonight, and I'm telling you, this was so spontaneous. Elizabeth just found out about this, just not so yeah. many minutes ago. <laughs> but we are going to just find out all about her, and uh, I'm telling you, God has done many things in her life, and you heard her te her husband's testimony last night yeah. called The Miracle Road. So she has witnessed a lot of miracles. A lot. <laughs> but, you know, the name of our devotion tonight is called The Simple Life. And I want you to look around me. You see all this wood? Now this is her, can you hand me a piece of wood, please? Just just any piece of wood. Uh, you may meet her daughter. She's got, they've got four children. Four, yeah. But um, this is the simple life now, and this is what she's chosen, that what they've chosen to live. Um, now your father, your parents owned a, a large business at one point, right? Yes, a delivery company. A delivery company. Yep. Um, and that's how you met your, you met your husband there. Yes. And we'll have to say, now you see, Carl, can you, can you just, uh, well, you can see him at a distance. He's out there working too. But uh, what's, is there a little bit of an age difference? Yeah, there's about 20 years. 20 years, but yeah. you've been married almost 19 years. Yeah, the August 11th will be our 19th anniversary. Now, how was your parents, how did they feel about that at first? Oh, they didn't like it. They didn't like it. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no. But it's turned out wonderful. Yes. And they're quite the team. And you talked about when you first met, you know, you were talking on the phone. And this was before the the um, the free Oh, yeah. Free. Phone Unlimited call. calling. Unlimited calling. Thank yep. you. And so tell me what you did. Um, we actually ran up a phone bill unknowingly on my dad's uh, company cell phones. It was a couple thousand for a month. We we talked so much. Seven thousand minutes, right? Yes. That it cost her two thousand yep. dollars. And did your dad? He made you pay it back. Yep, I had to make payments. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they they found that uh, connection, and I'm telling you, telling you, God uses them, and they both have the same heart. And you got a piece of wood. But this woman right here, Elizabeth. <laughs> now, this is some of the stuff that she cuts. This is just a little little piece of it. She is a working machine. She can outwork. Her husband said she can outwork a lot of men, and uh, but she's a pioneer woman. Really, yeah. would you say you're a pioneer woman? Oh yeah, I love it. <laughs> now tell me what made you? Because I say the simple life. You know, sometimes we our life can be complicated. Yeah. We can complicate our life, and you know, but you you've made the decision to just live more at ease and trust God. For, yeah, we we completely live by faith. Okay, you're going to find out about that in just a little bit. You completely live by faith. And listen, you've been married for almost 19 years, and you told me today that you, you've you never had an argument? Never had a fight. Never had a fight? Yeah, okay. never had a fight. I guess there's a difference, right? An yeah. argument and then a fight. <laughs> yeah. They've never had a fight in 19 yep. years. And this is something you said. Why? It's because you have mutual respect? Yes. We believe that God made everybody different. And we don't always have to see everything the same. So just because I see something one way, I don't believe that he has to see it the same way. Oh, so, wow. If we could get yeah. that concept, that's that's just simple, right? Yeah. It's just simply put, and yeah. it's easy for us to understand. I'm going to show you some more things that she does. Let me, the canning, okay? Yeah. The girl, she cans everything. <laughs> what is that? Squash? Those are bread and butter pickles. Oh, bread and butter pickles. Bread and butter pickles. Yeah. <laughs> Bread and butter pickles. Yeah. And I'm sure they're delicious. Oh, yeah. Now, here's something else that she does. And these are, she cooks, uh, they make fried pies on these. They cook everything out on the fire, pretty much. As yeah. much as you can, they cook yep. on the fire. Even in the winter. <laughs> Even in the winter, yep. they gather out here and they cook. And they, uh, they have a close family, close-knit family, for sure. And there's something else that they... Uh, the place that they live, this used to be just, I'm looking right across where the Mississippi River used to be when there was a great earthquake mm -hmm. back in the, um, you know, the New Madrid yeah, fault. Yeah, when there was that earthquake and the Mississippi ran backwards. When it ran backwards, it actually changed the direction of yeah. where the Mississippi River was. So before that the mississippi river was right here across the street yeah it's pretty cool and so there's a lot of they found a lot of arrowheads used to be a um yeah. a lot of indian uh settlement here yeah and this is something else that that they find in their in their ground a lot with their when they're planting their garden before yeah. you show them that let me show okay. them the, the dolls if you would she's made dolls out of corn husk yeah i mean the simple life she's used what she has 
you know, to, uh, to make things even. She's very creative, very crafty. Um, now tell us about the marbles. Um, well, every time we till up the garden in the spring, it unearths more marbles. And every time it rains, you find more marbles laying in the yard. And we found from, these are the old clay marbles. Oh, hold it up really, look at that. <laughs> Where did that come from, Elizabeth? That was out here in the yard. But it's an, it's an Indian. Yeah. Okay, so it's an, it's an Indian marble. Yeah, they, they think they're from the colonial days. Okay. When, like, 1900s and before yeah. that. So the children would play marbles. Yeah. On your property. Yeah. The, in the colonial day, during the colonial days, and then the Indian children would uh, switch, they would... They would trade. They would trade. Yep. And so they, they would trade with their clay marbles. Yes. And yep. get and bring some of the beautiful marbles at home. So, you know, kids, even though they didn't have, uh, they couldn't speak the same language, they could yeah. communicate. They could communicate through a simple game. And so we want to talk about, you know, the, the simple faith. Because except we come as children, what is it about a child, Elizabeth, that God wants us to come like? Um, what the, is it about the, them? The child, like the, oh, I can't even think of how to put it. <laughs> well, what is it the, about a child? They... Okay, they just believe, yeah. don't they? They believe what you say, and just like God wants us to believe what the Word says. Yeah, there, there's no restrictions. It's just complete abandonment, freedom. right? Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, and just believing. Yeah, And, you know, a lot of times the children, well, of course, what is it about a child again? They trust, they, they believe, they don't hold grudges. You know, they can fight one minute, and then what happens? And they're best friends the next. That's right. <laughs> And, and so that's that's the way the Lord wants us to come. They and they just simply believe what you say, and that's what we're going to uncover tonight of some some experiences that they've had. They've seen you've seen miracles, haven't you? Oh yes, we've seen many. You've seen God multiply your supplies many times. Multiply yes. your supplies, yes. your food. <laughs> um, and you talk because they plant. You plant everything, yes. right? And this is what you said. How? Tell me how it's amazing to you how God can take one. Oh seed. yeah. Um, we do a lot of the heirloom seeds, which they're not uh, genetically altered in any way. Um, it, it's basically from the parent seed. And they will grow from this tiny little seed into this massive plant to produce food for us. And then if you leave some of the fruit on the plant, it dries down and it drops the next seed to be replanted right next to the plant that's already growing. Wow, God's perfect it's plan. Of how he does that. <laughs> and that's faith. Tell me about what you just said and use it in the way of faith. It, all it takes, you know, he said, if you had faith as a mustard seed, and there's something, I, I know Rick has preached a message about mustard seed faith. There's characteristics about that mustard seed. That little bitty seed, Elizabeth, turns into the largest garden plant. That's right. And so that's what he's saying. If you just believe, just come simple as that child. It's, it's the simple faith then you know you'll see it multiply and we're going to talk about what happened in your life not so long ago when you you didn't have any food yeah okay and you it was um right before thanksgiving it was in between thanksgiving and christmas and at christmas time we always do it's almost like a second thanksgiving for us because the white cottons like to eat <laughs> <laughs> but um for christmas we try to do a big feast and celebration of jesus birthday and that Christmas, we didn't have any food wow. at all. And as soon as we got done praying, um, there was a man that was previously at our church that moved to Texas. Um, but he called us and he said, would you guys happen to need some turkey? And we're like, well, yeah. But can I stop you a minute? Yeah. You were praying for turkey, weren't we you? We were praying for turkey. <laughs> Say it again. Tell me, how, tell me about your prayers and just... They just believe what they said. What did you ask God? We asked God to help us get a turkey for Christmas dinner. Wow. Wow. And he called and he said, would you guys happen to need a turkey? And we're like, yes. And he goes, well, I have 13. 13. 13 There's that turkeys. multiplication again of that, that seed. You know, I wanted, I wanted to insert that you said that you, when you had no food, you apologized. Yeah. To God. Tell me about that. Because that's one of the holidays that our kids really look forward to. And we apologize to God that we didn't have it for his children. 
Wow. And so what happened is when he went to get more, we're going to talk real loud. I, is that a train That's coming? A train. <laughs> Here comes a train. Yep. I hear that train a coming. <laughs> okay. Oh, here's the train. And now you hear that how many times a day? Oh, not really so long. Well. They come through a lot. Loud. <laughs> They come through a lot, but we don't really hear them anymore. I know, eventually, I mean, it's just like, you know, it's just, just part of your day. life. Yep. <laughs> well, I don't want you to miss her story. Um, let, let, we'll let that train pass. Uh, but you said you apologize because, I mean, that was, that was something that you felt, did you feel like it was um, on your part, why you didn't have it? Because at yeah, this time, you were only working, right? No, neither one of oh, us Oh, neither were. one of you were working. That was after Carl's brain surgery, so neither one of us were working, and there was no money coming into the house. Okay, so then when God supplied it, 13 turkeys, 13 turkeys. tell me what you did with all those turkeys. Um, Real loud. <laughs> we went around the town and asked our neighbors if any of them needed a turkey, and we actually were able to give to 10 different families. Wow. And then after that, for the next two weeks, there was people driving up and just dropping food off on the front porch. Canned goods and like boxes of stuffing and cranberry sauce. Wow. And so we ended up having the complete Christmas dinner. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was more than enough for us. And so, again, we were able to help those 10 different families. So not only did God provide a complete Christmas dinner for our family, but 10 others. That is awesome because that is your heart, isn't it? It is. You know, they have set up, they have like a little prayer. Uh, someone had given them a trailer, right? No, we bought it. Oh, you bought it. They, they bought a, t a trailer. They live in a house here. It used to be your grand Carl's grandma, grandma's. Carl's yeah. grandmother's house. Yeah. Can we show them your house? Or maybe yeah. just, oh, no, just like the outside of it. Yeah. I'll just show you where they live. It's a, it's a neat, actually, it's got some, a lot of history to it. This is their house yeah, right it's here. It's over 100 years old. Over 100 years old. And so what they have done, oh, I'm sorry. I'm kind of wiggling around here. They have they have had supplies come out from their house to help feed their town. Look at that, guys. I mean, that is special. And something else they've done, because I'm saying the simple life, it doesn't matter. I mean, to them, they, they painted the Ten Commandments on, the front, on their front porch. <laughs> now, tell me about what happens because you did that. Um, when people are lost and they don't know what town they're in, or um, we've even had people show up and ask for us to introduce them to Jesus wow. because of that. But when people are lost and they don't know where they're at, God will actually tell them to go to the house with the Ten Commandments by the door. Isn't that something? And they will treat you right. Yep. I'm not talking about a sign, guys. I'm talking about they painted it on their house. Yep. <laughs> not a sign that will blow away or fade away. They've got yep. it protected under the porch. But I think that's something else. You know, they're, they're not worried about, you know, making it look just so beautiful like yep. some of us do. But it's like, you know, it's all about all about getting the, the message out. And so I love that. You said it was way beyond what you asked for. Tell me about that, what God had blessed you with. The food. the food. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm back to the food. Okay. <laughs> it, it was. It was way beyond because all we had asked for was a simple Christmas dinner with a turkey. Possibly wow. some stuffing because, you know, it's like I tell the kids that we're homegrown. Um, I've always cooked home meals for them and we show it that we're homegrown because <laughs> we like our food. But um, it was way beyond what we had asked for wow and that's just what his word says and i know you've all experienced that on, on different occasions when you've prayed ephesians 3 and 20 says now all glory to god who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think this was more than you could ask or think oh, yes. um and I, I think it's amazing because you got to share the blessings with other people it wasn't just for you it spilled over and that's what God does he not it's not only just to bless you but to get that blessing through you as well to help other people and so you get to help your neighbors neighbors as well I want you to tell me a story because we're talking about the simple life and we're talking about simple faith just believing what God said he would do 
um, I want you to tell us the story about Carl's grandmother that had that kind of faith, that had the childlike, simple faith, and just believed God and God answered. So okay. tell me that story. Well, um, her maiden name was Casey. And, well, as a lot of you know, our oldest name's Casey. So we named him after her. But um, there was several times that she would actually go to church on Sunday knowing that she had no food in her house at all wow. and put her last penny into the offering plate knowing that when she got home there was nothing to eat and um on two occasions she came home and on her front porch there was a chicken sitting on two eggs <laughs> so she went wow. door to door and asked all the neighbors if anybody on any of them were loot had lost the chicken and they're all like no no so when she finally got done asking all the neighbors, she came home, she made chicken and dumplings. Isn't that something? Yeah. So she didn't keep the chicken and just eat the eggs? Nope. She was wanting some chicken and dumplings, she did. right? Well, because with making chicken and dumplings, they were able to eat for several days. Oh, wow. Versus, yeah. wow. And then God continued yes. to, to feed her, didn't he? Oh, yeah. I mean, if he has to bring a raven, like Elijah, a raven, you know, with uh, that brings the meat and the bread, you know, God's going to take care of you. I love his, his, the word that says, uh, Philippians 4, 19, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He owns it all. But he wants us to believe. Mark 5 and 36 is as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid. Only believe. This is when um, Jairus' daughter had died. But he said, Don't be afraid. Only believe. So maybe, maybe your hopes have died. But he said, don't be afraid, just believe. And when you were experiencing fear, Elizabeth, at different times, or like God, oh, yeah. you know, especially when you're raising children, but you had to resolve to, I'm just going to believe. Well, you know, Carl and I had just talked about this yesterday morning um, on one of my break times of how God tells us to praise him in all things. That's right. And it's hard at times, <laughs> but... Um, there's a lot of reminders that reminds you to praise him. That's right. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the, the verse that says um, in Mark, then Jesus said to his, his disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. He said, I tell you, everybody say, I tell you. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've, re that you've received it, it will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against. Remember that child? Isn't that something, the childlike faith? He said, forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against so that your Father in Heaven will forgive your sins too. I love that. You know, so sometimes, you know, there may be something, we're really believing God, we're, we're believing God for something, but he'll remind us if we have anything against someone else or that we need to forgive. I thought, you know, something he just inserted that in that scripture. Um, and here's one, too, that I love. And I, I can't find it now. It's just off my page. But it talks about the mystery, holding on to the mystery. Oh, here it is. First Timothy 3 and 9 says, holding the mystery of faith with a pure conscience. And so, to, be, to you know, to have that simple faith. And, you know, God obviously... You know, we say, why does he answer someone's prayer and not others? You know, we that's a mystery to us, right? But he's saying, you you just come to me. You hang on to that faith with a good conscience, right? Yeah. He said, just come to me with that good conscience like that child and believe what you're praying. You know, sometimes I've heard this saying a lot, and I love it. You've got to say what you see so you can see what you say. And that's what he's wanting us to do is get those words out there. Call his, his word back to him. Look, that's... I mean, that's what he wants us to do is to trust him. So, Carl, I'm going to bring you. You see him with the orange shirt. He's he's out there working. And, you know, this family, they they don't just sit around. They're, there's things to do. There's chickens to feed and, you know, the ducks. ducks. So got to gather them <laughs> eggs. So, Carl, will you join us right in the middle and break up these two blues that we have on? Because <laughs> I'm all about it. Stoop down here if you would. You know, God has performed. You've heard his testimony last night. God's performed miracles in his life. And God's given him. He, he has seen people healed through that healing coming through his hands with that simple childlike faith. So, Carl, would you send us out in prayer? There, some of you are believing God for something, and, man, you've been hanging on for a while. Don't you give up. God, listen, your breakthrough is coming. You just believe, like Jesus said. Carl, lead us in prayer tonight.
Father, really we now. thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing in yes, our lives. Yes, Jesus. And we ask that you reach out and touch everybody who's watching. And it's like, because they need things too. They need, from healings to yes, Jesus. peace in their hearts, maybe uh, troubled children or whatever. They, they need to stand strong on your word. Yes, Jesus. Show your presence real to them so that they can stand a little bit yes. easier. We love you so much. We need you in our lives yes. for everything. Yes. I depend on you, and I know everybody else should depend on you for everything. Yes. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 That's so good. Thank you for spending some time with us. Look, she's getting ready to make me a cherry pie or some type of we a pie. We call it a hobo pie. A hobo pie out of those... <laughs> Out of those, uh, the iron, cast what are they again? The cookers. cast iron cookers. And I mean, I think this is just really cool. You know what? Just take a break tonight. And, you know, maybe you need to just need to go out and maybe start a fire and look up at the stars and say, God, just let me experience some of that simple life and, and just just have some time to to, to meet with you and, and let, let the day just kind of settle down and reflect, you know, of what he's done in your life. We love you. God loves you, and have a great rest of your night. All right? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.